Welcome back, everyone, to the... Welcome back, everyone, to 0K 2020 August 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And I'm currently joined with Google Frog, who has won the tournament. Congratulations, Google Frog. You won Hello. a tournament. Thanks. So now we're going to be doing the second place tiebreaker. Figure out who is the person after Google Frog in standings. The semi final of the second place tiebreaker. Yeah, this is currently the semi final of the second place tiebreaker. Starting out will be Anarchid versus Nemor. And Anarchid already going on for... Okay, going very quickly for... Interesting choice there with the Rovers. While Nemo, on the other hand, going for Shield Bots. And I remember you mentioned you did want to see a Felon Rush. Off stream, Google Frog, you mentioned you wanted to see a Felon Rush. In. Well, I reckon someone probably would Felon Rush. But it looks like... An Arcid command is moving left, and it's just going to keep moving left until the game ends. That? That's my theory. Yep, that seems like a likely theory. I, I certainly agree. And Anarchid's commander doesn't seem to have a lot going to stop them either. Cer currently... Oh, it's stopped. Rock launch. Okay, well, they might be stopped by forgetting to set orders. That, that could stop them. That clearly has stopped them. But in terms of actual military force... I don't know that Nemo is actually building anything up quickly enough to stop them. Setting a very quick outlaw, which I guess would slow them, but the He's fences are already in place. Hmm? He's hoping that he can move his shields with an outlaw into whatever comes. Yeah, well, it's not going to be fast enough. Unfortunately, Nemo did not quite have the economy for that, so... Well... It'll be a I thing. I can't go around building mexes. Mexes are not good in this situation. No, Anarchist What's Commander, he I though. I think he has to just jump at the fences and kill it. Well, got the Convict Shield. So certainly a good start. Unfortunately, that didn't work for very long. He had to send his Commander in. Yeah, the Rocket Launcher. To get launchers. some damage on the fences. Yeah, because the Rocket Launcher was the only way you could... Well, sorry, the Rocket Launcher got rid of the Bandits. The Bandits can get rid of the Fencers. I like that convict use, but yeah, at this point, Nemo looking like they're going for that. They're getting the upgrade. Nope, they're they're GGing. It's two minutes. Two minutes in. Okay, well, we'll just leave that at that. And Anarchid with the commander rush. So where's Kshatri and Saniac? Let's go to Kshatri and Saniac and see what they're up to. Because that's a thing that just happened. One hell of a com rush. Like, with the delay, the... We're... The game just started on stream. Like, for the people actually watching. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a two-minute delay. So, that's how it works. Okay, this game might go for a bit longer. Maybe. Saniac. Both sides have made constructors. Well, that is a start. That is saying something. Saniac coming in here with actually a reasonably strong economy setup. Shatri a little... He's been a bit greedy. Little bit, but it's working out that the assault in the north never happened. Pyro got taken out early on, and that's a nice chunk of metal in Saniac's base. Though Kshatra, speaking of greedy, Kshatra is going hard for the rock reclaim. Doesn't have a whole lot of energy behind it, though. It looks like Saniac wants to reclaim trees, but has forgotten that part of the strategy. The zero solar strategy. Well, no, I think they want to reclaim trees. The problem is that there's a bunch... It's hard to reclaim trees. Trees don't auto-reclaim anymore. So there's some weird rule around that. I, You would know better than I would, because I've, I've run into the problem, and I'm assuming that was a change that you made. No, they auto-reclaim, as in... If you drag a circle, they'll reclaim. Really? Because in my just case, that it... rocks reclaim first. Oh, okay. Because that was some setting. Okay, maybe I should check because but... it seems like in my case the rocks reclaim and then the worker thinks it's done. It's like no, yeah, by default, no, there's trees. Things would reclaim everything. Hmm. I'll just check my settings then. But yeah, He's you're right. Saying, yeah, causing a that. problem though. Yeah, this is the raid you were talking about. You were saying that Shatru was, or sorry, Saniac was being greedy. 
And Shatra, there they are, punishing that greed. Actually, considering Saniac accessing as much as they are without the energy, and Shatra's commander coming into the base, this could be the game. Shatra flanking on both sides here, and... Which is how you flank. That is how flanking works. And Saniac realizing they have been outflanked, throwing in the towel, and that is a slightly longer game. Yeah. Though I think it's Expanding still started now with on stream. No turrets. Yeah, well, Pretty that's, risky. That's, that's old style. That's, that is old school. Zero K. This is hyper expansion, which admittedly, you know, the more expensive mechs is generally stop, but nope, not in this case. So yeah, that was that was quick. We're gonna be going on to the finals, which I believe are on random crags. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Best of one as well, because it's all just tie breaks. Oh yeah, no, this is That's all that is. So where is the random crags match? Anarchy. I guess I read the meta intention correctly. Yeah, you kind of did. <laughs> uh, that calm rush was certainly reading the meta. Give you that. Oh. People are going to complain in two minutes. The music's too loud. All right. So random crags, I don't think is going to be that fast. Probably 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I think it's 12 by 12. And really, it just depends what the map is. It's usually True. pretty open, though. True, which, yeah, like, uh, that's that tells me it's going to be a reasonably economic game. Yeah. Gotta say, kind of surprised we aren't seeing a whole lot of fact plates. Shatter is the only person I've seen actually use them. Well, you don't really want to mess up your, like, what you do. That's your true. style. That's true. I just think they're really cool. <laughs> I just really like them. So, I just want to see more of them. But maybe next year. Yeah, time. I found more uses of them. Oh? Especially in a 2v2 tournament, you'd see them probably. Oh, yeah, you're right, because you can just use your, your teammate's tech. Or yeah, do so other I'd stuff expect, where it's like, yeah. I'd expect more air starts, although I don't know 2v2. You'd think that an air I start could... would be good almost all the time, but sometimes it's not. The one thing I could see, though it's a little risky economy-wise and a little easier to do with unit transfer, is possibly more reaver drops. Yeah. I could see that, just because you could plate, you could gunship plate off of your teammate's gunship factory and have a cloaky factory. And do that all yourself. I think the final room might be going up. Yep. So they're simultaneous, but I assume you want second. Hmm? I assume oh. you want second place. Oh, second oh, well, and third, yes. Yeah, second, third. Yeah, there's no third place match effectively for fourth place, as far as I know. I mean, maybe there is, I just would be surprised. Since I don't think fourth place counts for anything. Anyhow, we get into it. And I forgot my UI is all screwy at this point. I don't know why. It's like I need to have the preset on and it's just... Did something change in the way the UI scaling works? Because it's... Eh, I'll talk about it later. No. Okay, because I have my UI scaled, but now it's like occupying a smaller area of the thing than... Oh, sh oh shoot. Did my... Is my lobby using the wrong resolution? No, that's correct.
Okay, that's weird. Something was changed about... Um, there was something to do with changing get view geometry with get window geometry or something, which apparently has no... Oh. Okay, because no it seems to effect. be... Oh, okay, it might have an effect, actually, because it seems like I'm getting... Oops. Yep, they seem to have started. Yes, they have. Okay, sorry, we'll talk about this later. Anyway, probably shouldn't bother talking about on stream. Anarchid going for Colquat Factory, as it looks like so is Kshatriya. Why is my... Oops. Yeah, both players going for Colquat Factory. Fairly straightforward start. Actually, this is... This looks a lot like... This happens to look a lot like Wanderlust. No, not Wanderlust. Uh, it's not Wanderlust. It's... Uh, what was that new map? Kind of a deserty map. Firebreak? Yeah, I think so. That sounds about right. The middle is very open. I'm going to fix that, I reckon. Make the middle... Put something in the middle every time. Oh, for random crags? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant for fire break. It's like, well, I mean, you can just change the... I think the map works fine, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like have a lake in the middle or something? Or just have... Just make a something mountain. which puts a cliff or a mountain. As in, you can mess with the generation to... Force something right. there. Right. But you That's know, true. force barrier and then let the the later layer figure out what the barrier is. Yeah, that's that's fair. They seem to have picked different expansion patterns. Yeah, and Anarchy's going for a much safer pattern over the back, while Kshatriya wants to really push forward very quickly, getting basically the entire south side themselves. Oh, this rage pretty brutal over here. By an and Glaive coming back here, taking care of most of the power structures coming in from Kshatriya. Pretty much their entire wind farm gone. Kshatriya able to put a stop to that at the cost of one of their Glaives, but that was painful. The amount of damage they took there is... At least not going to lead to excess, but man, it's going to be tough to rebuild from. There are a few trees around, but not that many. Yeah. Yeah, they're reclaim and there's I mean Kshatri isn't even going for that reclaim. Anarchy on the other hand kind of fell behind. They were not expanding that quickly. And here comes a glaive trying to go for revenge. It is not gonna be able to manage it. Forced to retreat out of there, and well, retreating isn't as powerful as it used to be. So without the other has making radar. Look, two glaives coming in again. Because there's just no radar down the bottom. Yeah, people seem to be relying a lot more on commander radar, which for Kshatriya right now is not in range of their base by any stretch. So unfortunately losing their entire base once again, they don't really have a lot in the way of any static defense. The Lotus is just out of position completely. Glaive's trying to come in to save the day, but it's just not enough. Unfortunately, Kshatriya lost everything once again. Fortunately, they still have their conjurers up and going for a counter raid as well. And I gotta say, Kshatri does at the very least have a lot of territory under their control. Like they went for that more aggressive expansion pattern you were talking about, Google Frog, and I think it's paid off. Yeah, if they can actually get the energy to spend it. Well, they are reclaiming the trees, so they at least have the right idea. Anarchid looking to contest that over to the south side of the map, and Anarchid, I mean, both commanders are aware of the other thanks to the commander radar, but again, as you mentioned, that's it, and that means these glaives are able to come in, take out a conjurer, First Conjurer death. Kshatriya yeah. is taking out a Metal Extractor. There's, there's one over here on 6.1 health. Well, that is not death. <laughs> That's, that is a big di There's a big difference between heavily damaged and dead. And that difference is how easily can that Conjurer be used to rebuild things. But in Anarchist's case, the answer is not very. Shatra are going for auto repair on their on their commander, and Anarchid yet to upgrade theirs. Interesting choice. Oof. The raid coming over here in the southwest, Shatra losing their metal extractors once again. It's both, both players are being extremely risky with the way they approach this. Like, heavy on the glaives. Anarchid's now switched over to Reavers, but still has a lot of glaives in their queue. It's like heavy on the glaives, light on the static defense, and extremely 
risky when it comes to positioning, like entirely guessing on where their opponents are rather than having radar. Well, he's got radar now and it's worked out. The third, oh, you're right, you're right, there is radar. The wind did not actually succeed. That's right, and there's some radar over to the north side of the map as well, so Kshatriya has learned their lesson, but Anarchid relying still entirely on their commander for radar coverage. Kshatriya's got to scout these Reavers to get a response up in time. Yeah, good, uh, good going there. Well, they got the Reavers scouted. I don't see any run being built up yet, and these are not enough glaives to kill Reavers. Although against two Reavers, I don't know if there is enough glaives. Really. If you get a really good surround. If you get a really good surround, but against two Reavers, like one Reaver, six glaives will take him out with a good surround. Two Reavers, you need like, I think, 18 or so, and he'd still lose. Behaving like he didn't notice it, though. Hasn't even put down a turret. A turret, two turrets and glaives can probably beat Reavers. Yes, that, that I agree with. But what is he doing? There are none. Oh, he started Ronin now. Oh, that's pretty risky. You need three or four to be... Well, actually, one would be enough to at least slow things down. But yeah, you need three or four to be really effective. One would be enough to probably kill them eventually, but before they kill your entire base, I'm not so sure. Anarchid isn't going for it, though. Anarchid's being a little safer. I mean, granted, they have been raided in their back line, so Anarchid might want to pull back, though the Reavers are doing a fine enough job defending. Yeah, that was a big waste of all those guys, all those slaves. I don't think Chachar cares though. If you look at their economy, I mean, they're way ahead. They're relying a lot on energy reclaim, but they are way ahead when it comes to metal income. They are way ahead when it comes to territory control, and the territory isn't like free. That they do have lotuses set up around just to defend it reasonably okay. Anarchy, on the other hand, going hard for that commander rush with the Reavers. That's a classic rush style. Two Reavers and commander. I mean, it's seven minutes into the game, so not exactly a rush, but you know. The idea is there. Yeah, Chash is not... He could be committing to it, but he's not doing it so much. And Arkid may well kill this base before he gets any retribution. Well, the knight's coming so in here to try to provide that. The map. That is a lot of glaives. 14, 15 glaives coming into Anarchid's base. Kshatriya... Looking to find the counter going over to the north side. They are going to be running up against Ronin. It won't be too difficult to deal with this. That by itself. Yeah, not to mention the commander and the Reavers. Knight coming in, trying to find some traction, but it's simply not enough firepower in one area. The raid happening at the same time over in the north is simply not going to be enough. Kshatriya needs to defend their base, and they do not have the forces to do it. The Klogibot factory goes, or will be soon going down. The only hope Why is the Glaives die the in the explosion, one. and they do, but that is probably going to be it. Kshatriya, they're still raiding reasonably okay, but they basically have to get a successful base trade off this, and two Glaives to take out a fact, one Glaive to take out a factory is simply not going to happen in time. Kshatriya's commander comes in here, it's got shields, it's got, it's got armor, it's otherwise it's got lasers. Trying its best to come in here and take out the factory, get a nice base trade going. And if it does, Kshatri does have the economic advantage to try to rebuild from here. But that commander is not long for this world, if my math's correct. He's got to start placing lotuses. That, that factory How... probably could be killed. Maybe. It's not That's... even being targeted by, targeted by anything. Uh... I don't know, I kind of agree with the Lotus. A Lotus, a Lotus to kill the Stinger. Oh, yeah, Lotus. right. Oof. There's not uh, enough. No, it wouldn't have been enough in time. Stinger. Ooh, no, no. Wait, really? He's, no, that Stinger's gonna be... Him, he's, gonna, he's gonna be killed by the explosion of the factory. Yeah, that's it. Oof. Yeah, Kshatra is rebuilding over to the north side of the map, getting a Clokebot factory with a Caretaker, but they know it's over. They throw in the towel, and Anarchid takes second place. Kshatriya takes third place, and that is... That's it. <laughs> that's that's the tournament. Kshatriya with a nice little bit of terrain con or territory control, but unfortunately losing their main base to a concentrated assault from Anarchid. That pretty much makes the game. Yeah, Anarchid seemed better at um, walking into bases. In those that, last few games, yeah. especially. 
yeah, they, and this was an unupgraded commander too. They just had a couple Reavers behind them and the de static defense is allowing for a bit of a harder push. As opposed to the flank play, which had no static defense and was relying entirely on the shields, which had been drained. Well. Yeah, if it moved in faster, it would have helped as well. Move in faster, put a few turrets down. Yeah. Though it's tough to move in. I mean, I guess you could have upgraded servos and also gone in sooner. Just less idle time. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But anyway, that is going to be it for us. So thank you all for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, Google Frog, for coming in for the tiebreaker commentary, co-commentary. Yeah, no problem. And thanks, everyone, for participating in the tournament. Until, so until next time, have a good night, everyone, and thanks for watching. Ah, there we go.